Hello, you can heal family. Today we are reading our scriptures and we are going to reread the Gospel of Luke, chapters 7 through 9. Yesterday I tried something new and it did not work, but that's okay because I tried. So eventually I would like to read live at 7 a.m. every morning, but there are a few things I need to work out. But don't worry, we're going to continue with our reading. And it just reminded me that, you know, if you need to try something, don't be afraid. If it doesn't work, if it fails, you're one step closer to getting where you need to be. So just keep on going, keep on growing, keep believing in yourself, and keep trying new things. You know, if God shows you something, act on it and move on it. So when I um, revisit the lives, we'll make sure that everything is working <laughs> and in order. But for now, we're going to continue reading in the Gospel of Luke. We are on Chapter 7, reading from the Open Bible, New Living Translation. And if it was your first time tuning in yesterday, again, I apologize. We're going to do um, this reading again today and then just keep on going. My name is Sheena Major. I'm a life coach and I help people heal from unhealthy relationships so they can learn to love themselves. All right, here we go. Luke chapter 7. A Roman officer's servant is healed. When Jesus had finished saying all this, he went back to Cape Bernam. Now the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officers heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish leaders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to come with them and help the man. If anyone deserves your help, it is he, they said, for, the love, for he loves the Jews and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them, but just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say, go and they go, or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this or that, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all the land of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. A widow's son is raised. Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Man, with a great crowd following him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The boy who had died was, only, was the only son of a widow, and many mourners from the village were with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, he said, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to walk to those around him, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God, saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us, and we have seen the hand of the work today. The report of what Jesus had done that day spread all over Judea and even across its borders. John's questions are answered. The disciples of John the Baptist told John about everything Jesus was doing. So John called for two of his disciples, and he sent them to the Lord to ask him, are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? John's two disciples found Jesus and said to him, John the Baptist sent us to ask, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? At that very time, he cured many people of their various diseases, and he cast out evil spirits and restored sight to the blind. Then he told John's disciples, Go back to John and tell him what you have seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. 
and tell him God blesses those who are not offended by me. Jesus praises God. After they left, Jesus talked to the crowd about John. Who is this man in the wilderness that you went out to see? Did you find him weak as a reed, moved by every breath of wind? Or were you expecting to see a man dressed in expensive clothes? No people who wear beautiful clothes and live in luxury are found in palaces, not in the wilderness. Were you looking for a prophet? Yes, and he is more than a prophet. John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, Look, I am sending my messenger before you, and he will prepare your way before you. I tell you, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John. Yet even the most insignificant person in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When they heard this, all the people, including the unjust tax collectors, agreed that God's plan was right, for they had been baptized by John, but the Pharisees and experts in religious law had rejected God's plan for them, for they had refused John's baptism. Jesus criticizes his generation. How shall I describe this generation? Jesus asked. With what will I compare them? They are like a group of children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends, we've played wedding songs and you weren't happy, so we played funeral songs, but you weren't sad. For John the Baptist didn't drink wine and he often fasted and you say he's a demon possessed? And I, the son of man, feast and drink? And you say, is he a glutton and a drunkard? And a friend of the worst sort of sinners? But wisdom is shown to be right by the lives of those who follow it. A woman anoints Jesus' feet. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to come to him for a meal. So Jesus accepted the invitation and sat down to eat. A certain immoral woman heard he was there and brought a beautiful jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt before his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisees, who was the host, saw what was happening and who the woman was, he said to himself, This proves that Jesus is no prophet. If God had really sent him, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. The Story of Two Debtors Then Jesus spoke up and answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. All right, teacher, Simon replied. Go ahead. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that. Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss of greeting, but she has kissed my feet again and again from the time I first came in. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven, so she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, who does this man think he is going around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Luke chapter 8 Certain women minister to Christ. Not long afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby cities and villages to announce the good news concerning the kingdom of God. He took his twelve disciples with him, along with some women he had healed and from whom he had cast out evil spirits. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Jezza, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. Story of the Soils One day, Jesus told this story to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. 
a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on a shallow soil with underlying rock. This seed began to grow, but soon it withered and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among thorns that shot up and choked out the tender branches. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop 100 times as much as had been planted. When he had said this, he called out, Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked him what the story meant, and he replied, You have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I am using these stories to conceal everything about it from outsiders, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. They see what I do, but they don't really see. They hear what I say, but they don't understand. This is the meaning of the story. The seed is God's message. The seed that fell on the hard path represents those who hear the message, but then the devil comes and steals it away and prevents them from believing and being saved. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message with joy, but like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. They believe for a while, but they wilt when the hot winds of testing blow. The thorny ground represents those who hear and accept the message. But all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow into maturity. But the good soil represents honest, good-hearted people who hear God's message, cling to it, and steadily produce a huge harvest. Illustration of the Lamp no one would light a lamp and then cover it up or put it under a bed. No, lamps are mounted in the window where they can be seen by those entering the house. For everything that is hidden or secret will eventually be brought to light and made plain to all. So be sure to pay attention to what you hear. To those who are open to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But to those who are not listening, even what they think they have will be taken away from them. Christ's True Family Once, when Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, they couldn't get to him because of the crowds. Someone told Jesus, Your mother and brothers are outside and they want to see you. Jesus replied, My mother and my brothers are all those who hear the message of God and obey it. The storm is stilled. One day, Jesus said to the disciples, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. On the way across, Jesus lay down for a nap. And while he was sleeping, the wind began to rise. A fierce storm developed and threatened to swamp them, and they were in real danger. The disciples woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we are going to drown. So Jesus rebuked the wind and the raging waves. The storm stopped and all was calm. Then he asked them, Where is your faith? And they were filled with awe and amazement. They said to one another, Who is this man that even the winds and waves obey him? Demons are cast into pigs. So they arrived in the land of Gennesarene, across the lake from Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him. Homeless and naked, he had lived in a cemetery for a long time. As soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell to the ground before him screaming, Why are you bothering me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Please, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out. This spirit had often taken control of the man, even when he was shackled with chains. He simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness, completely under the demon's power. What is your name? Jesus asked. Legion, he replied, for the man was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside nearby, and the demons pleaded with him to let them enter into the pigs. Jesus gave them permission. So the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, 
and the whole herd plunged down the steep hill into the lake where they drowned. When the herdsmen saw it, they fled to the nearby city and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. A crown suit gathered around Jesus, for they wanted to see for themselves what had happened. And they saw the man who had been possessed by demons sitting quietly at Jesus' feet, clothed and sane. And the whole crowd was afraid. Then those who had seen what had happened told the others how the demon-possessed man had been healed. And all the people in that region begged Jesus to go away and leave them alone, for a great wave of fear swept over them. So Jesus returned to the boat and left, crossing back to the other side of the lake. The man who had been demon-possessed begged to go, too, but Jesus said, No, go back to your family and tell them all the wonderful things God has just done for you. So he went all through the city, telling about the great things Jesus had done for him. A woman is healed. On the other side of the lake, the crowds received Jesus with open arms because they had been waiting for him. And now a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell down at Jesus' feet, begging him to come home with him. His only child was dying, a little girl, 12 years old. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowd, and there was a woman in the crowd who had a hemorrhage for 12 years. She had spent everything she had on doctors and still could find no cure. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately, the blood stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing against you. But Jesus told him, No, someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that Jesus knew, she began to tremble, fell to her knees before him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Jairus' daughter raved. While he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from Jairus' home with the message, Your little girl is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard this, what had happened, he said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just trust me, and she will be all right. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, James, John, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they all knew she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, get up, child. And at that moment, her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed. But Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what happened. Luke chapter 9. Twelve are sent to preach. One day, Jesus called together his twelve disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the coming of the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Don't even take along a walking stick, he instructed them, nor a traveler's bag, nor food, nor money, not even an extra coat. When you enter each village, be a guest in only one home. If the people of the village won't receive your message when you enter it, shake off its dust from your feet as you leave. It is a sign that you have abandoned that village to its fate. So they began to circuit of the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. When the reports of Jesus' miracles reached Antipas, he was worried and puzzled because some were saying, this is John the Baptist come back to life again. Others were saying it is Elijah or some other ancient prophet risen from the dead. I beheaded John, Herod said, so who is this man about whom I hear such strange stories? And he tried to see him. 5,000 or 5. When the apostles returned, they told Jesus everything they had done. Then he slipped away 
with them toward the town of Bethsaida. But the crowds found out where he was going, and they followed him, and he welcomed them, teaching them about the kingdom of God and curing those who were ill. Late in the afternoon, <coughs> excuse me, the twelve disciples came to him and said, Send the crowds away to the nearby villages and farms, so they can find food and lodging for the night. There's nothing to eat here in this deserted place. But Jesus said, You feed them. Impossible, they protested. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Or are you expecting us to go and buy enough food for this whole crowd? For there were about 5,000 men there. Jesus told them to sit down on the ground in groups of about 50 each. Jesus replied, So the people all sat down. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looking up toward heaven, and asked God's blessing on the food. Breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread and fish to the disciples to give to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they picked up twelve baskets of leftovers. Peter's Confession of Faith One day, as Jesus was alone praying, he came over to his disciples and asked them, who do people say I am? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say you are one of the other ancient prophets risen from the dead. Then he asked them, who do you say I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah sent from God. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about this. For I, the Son of Man, must suffer many terrible things, he said. I will be rejected by leaders the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. I will be killed, but three days later I will be raised from the dead. True Cost of Discipleship Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. And how do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose or forfeit your own soul in the process? If a person is ashamed of me and my message, I, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of that person when I return in my glory and in the glory of the Father and the Holy Angel. And I assure you that some of you standing here right now will die before you see the kingdom of God. The Transfiguration about eight days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to a mountain to pray. And as they were praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothing became dazzling white. Then two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared and began talking with Jesus. They were glorious to see, and they were speaking of how he was about to fulfill God's plan by dying in Jerusalem. Peter and the others were very drowsy and had fallen asleep. Now they woke up and saw Jesus' glory and the two men standing with him. As Moses and Elijah were starting to leave, Peter, not even knowing what he was saying, blurted out, Master, this is wonderful. We will make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even, it, but even as he was saying this, a cloud came over them, and terror gripped them as it covered them. Then a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice died away, Jesus was there alone. They didn't tell anyone what they had seen until long after it happened. Demon-possessed son is healed. The next day, after they had come down the mountain, a huge crowd met Jesus. A man in the crowd called out to him, Teacher, look at my boy, who is my only son. An evil spirit keeps seizing him, making him scream. It throws him into convulsions so that he foams at the mouth. It is always hitting and injuring him. It hardly ever leaves him. I begged your disciples to cast the spirit out, but they couldn't do it. You stubborn, faithless people, Jesus said. How long must I be with you and put up with you? Bring him here. As the boy came forward, the demon knocked him to the ground and threw him into a violent convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the evil spirit and healed the boy. Then he gave him back to his father. Awe gripped the people as they saw this display of God's power. Christ prophecies his coming death. 
While everyone was marveling over all the wonderful things he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, Listen to me and remember what I say. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed. But they didn't know what he meant. Its significance was hidden from them, so they could not understand it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. The Greatness Then there was an argument among them as to which of them would be the greatest. But Jesus knew their thoughts, so he brought a little child to his side. Then he said to them, Anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes my Father who sent me. Whoever is the least among you is the greatest. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons. We tried to stop him because he isn't in our group. But Jesus said, Don't stop him. Anyone who is not against you is for you. Samaria rejects Christ. As the time drew near for his return to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He sent messengers ahead to a Samaritan village to prepare for his arrival. But they were turned away. The people of the village refused to have anything to do with Jesus because he had resolved to go to Jerusalem. When James and John heard about it, they said to Jesus, Lord, should we order down fire from heaven to burn them up? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, so they went to another village. True Cost of Discipleship As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you no matter where you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests, but I... The Son of Man have no home of my own, not even a place to lay my head. He said to another person, Come, be my disciple. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. Jesus replied, Let those who are spiritually dead care for their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach the coming of the kingdom of God. Another said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts a hand to the plow, then looks back, is not fit for the kingdom of God. And that concludes our reading for today. I want to thank you for tuning in again to hear the scriptures being read to you. I hope that uh, yesterday you were able to um, read anyways. But if not, you just heard it today. And I'm so thankful for that. A lot of things stood out for me as I was reading, as they usually do. And uh, one of them is the, the beautiful story about the storm and how Jesus can quiet down anything that's going on internally in us or outside of us that's out of our control. He is that still small voice. He is that quiet spirit that will come and teach us all things. So when storms are raging around us or our minds are racing with thoughts, just go towards Jesus, knowing that He will make things all right. He is the calm stormer. He is. He's anything that you will need Him to be for you today. I, again, I want to thank you for joining me. My name is Sheena. Who will you allow Jesus to be for you today? Always remember that true healing begins with self-love. See you back here tomorrow.